Hey everyone, Kyle here. Today we're going to help a member of our CNC file help and support group on Facebook. And this here is Brian's question. He's a new user with VCarve and he's having trouble with his cribbage board he's designing. So today we're going to take a look at his file and answer his questions. So here we are in VCarve Pro and this is his file that he's having trouble with. And the problem he wants help with is carving all these lines inside of his project here. So we can take a look at this example picture here. He's wanting all these black lines to be carved inside of his cribbage board and then have the holes drilled in between. So if we go back to his file here, we can go over to the toolpath tab and we could take a look at the toolpath he has set up. So he has a toolpath here. This is to drill all the holes. So that one's okay. And this one here, he set up as a V carve to follow all these lines. But the problem he's having is if we double click on this to open it up, you could see he has a V carve toolpath set up to carve these lines at a flat depth of a 16th of an inch. So once you have all these lines selected and you click calculate, you can see it comes up with this message here saying we have 24 open vectors and there's only three closed vectors. So if you click OK, you could see this produces a result that we are not looking for. So if we were to preview this, so we'll preview selected. So you can see instead of carving the individual lines, this actually will carve out the entire shape there. And that's not what he wants. So we're going to reset our preview to bring that back. Let's go back to our 2D view. Now the quick answer to solve this problem is instead of using a V-carve toolpath, we're going to close this and we can use a profile toolpath instead. So let's select that. And with our profile toolpath, we have all of our same objects selected. We would want to switch the tool. We'll select the tool here. He was using a 90 degree V-bit, so we'll select that here. So 90 degree, click select. And then we can also switch our cut depth to the 16th of an inch that he had as well. So 0 0.0625. And then the most important part here, we wanted to cut on the line here. So click on. That's going to cut our 90 degree V-bit right on top of our line at a 16th of an inch deep. So everything looks good here. You can give this a name if you want and then click calculate. And now you can see that looks much better. So now if we preview this, so preview selected toolpath. You can see that looks pretty good. It might be a little bit too deep. We can adjust the depth though. And we can preview the holes. So we'll preview that. So this doesn't look too bad. Maybe it might be a little bit too deep. You can see the uh, your cut comes a little close to the holes there. So we can reduce the depth. So to do that, we're going to double click on that profile toolpath we just made. And the cut depth. Let's say we want to go 0 0.0, let's try 0 0.02. Click calculate and we're going to reset our preview. And then we'll select both the toolpaths we want to preview and click preview visible toolpath. And now we zoom in here, that looks much better. Now the only difference that's going to make by making the profile instead of the V-carve toolpath is on any corners. If you have an external corner, you could see it's going to put a radius on that corner because your bit will have a radius to it. And you can also see this line here might not be all the way up. So we can go into our 2D view and we'll zoom in on that line there. And you can see that's the case there. So any line like this, we can select this and this is part of a really long line here. So in order to adjust this, we're going to go into our node edit mode by typing the letter N on your keyboard. And before we move this, we want to make sure our smart snapping is turned on up here. So this will be blue to let you know that it's turned on. So we're good there. So now we want to select our endpoint and drag it straight up here. And you can see it's following that dotted line. And that letter S on your cursor is letting you know it's following the smart snapping. So we're going straight up in a vertical direction and we want to snap to this line. But you can see it's snapping at a slight angle because the midpoint of this top line here is slightly off from this line. So to fix that, we can go actually a little bit past our line there, making sure we're still following our smart snapping line. And then we can release that. And now we just have to switch over to our drawing tab and we can use our scissor tool. And we want to turn this checkbox off so we don't join anything together. We'll keep this an open vector. So we'll just select this here, the overlap to trim that away. 
and click close. And now we switch back over to our toolpath tab. And then that profile toolpath, we would right click and click recalculate. And then come here to recalculate again. And that's going to recalculate with the adjustment we've just made there. So we'll click OK. And now we can go to our 3D view. But you can see we no longer have a toolpath there. So that means it must have deselected that line when we trimmed it. So we'll go back to our 2D view. We'll zoom out here. Let's open up our profile again by double clicking. And we're just going to hold our shift key and select that line we adjusted and click calculate. And there we go. Now it's back. So we're going to reset our preview. And then we're going to select both of these toolpaths that we want and preview visible toolpaths. And now when we zoom in up here, you can see that looks much better because we extended our line there. So that's essentially how to fix the issue he's having. But I'm also going to show you if you wanted to use a V-carve toolpath, how you can use that and also create the square corners. So to do that, we're going to switch back to our drawing tab and back to our 2D view. And we'll do an example on this shape here. And to do this, you want to create an offset from your lines. So if you wanted to keep the center portion where it's at, we would go to our offset tool and we want to offset on both sides of the line. And then we're going to delete the original. So we'll select this checkbox here to delete this line that we have selected. And then it's going to create a new line on the inside and a new line on the outside of this line, whatever distance we set here. So at this point, you'd want to set a distance. So we have to figure out how wide we want our line. And whatever distance we set this will be exactly the width of our line. So let's say we wanted our line width at a 16th of an inch. So for our distance, we actually want half of that because we're going to offset on the inside and the outside. So both of those added together will equal the 16th. So to do that, if you know exactly half of your distance you want, you can enter that in. In this case, it'd be a 32nd, which is half of a 16th. But just in case you didn't know that, we can actually do a formula in here. So let's say if you didn't know what a 16th was in decimals, we can type in 1 divided by 16. So that's 1 16th and then type in the equal sign and that gives us 0 0.625. So that's 1 16th of an inch. But like I said, we want half of that. So we can type in another formula here. So we can do divide by 2 and that's going to divide this in half. And now we click equals and that gives us a 32nd of an inch or 0 0.3125. So now that's going to offset our line a 32nd inwards, a 32nd outwards, and then it's going to delete this original line we have selected because we checked this box here to delete. And we also want to make sure we have this checkbox here, create sharp offset corners. That'll give us nice sharp corners. So once we have this all set up, we're going to click offset. And there you go. You could see it deleted the original line inside of there and then created a new line on both sides. So if we wanted to, we can do that to all of our lines here. But by doing that, you're going to have to trim these all together afterwards. So that's going to create a lot of trimming work. And I can show you what I mean by that by let's say we've select these ones here and we do the same setup here. We'll offset these and we're going to click continue anyways. And you can see now we're going to have to manually trim all of these overlapping lines here. So that's going to create a lot of extra work for you. But this definitely is possible and I use this method a lot actually. It all depends on the look you're going for though. So let's undo that one. Let's edit undo. Bring these back to the original. Let's just keep this one the way it is. And I'll show you the difference what the toolpaths will look like. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to switch back over to our toolpath tab. And then that original toolpath that Brian made with the V-carve, we'll select that to open it up. And we are going to select only these two rectangles here. So the new lines that we created. And we're going to keep it set up the same flat depth of a 16th and the V bit of 90 degrees. Now we're going to click calculate. And now that created a new toolpath just for that box here. So we're going to reset our preview. And you can see on this toolpath in all of the corners, it actually raises the V bit up in the corners and that's going to give us nice sharp corners. So with this toolpath selected, we're going to click preview selected toolpath. And there you go. You can see we have nice sharp corners. And if we go back to our profile toolpath and we preview that. And you can see down here, we're obviously a little bit deeper 
but still you can see the corners. We have a radius on the profile lines here. And then on the V-carve toolpath, you'll have nice sharp corners because the V-bit will be raised up in the corners. So that's the difference we would have if we created offsetted lines that are closed vectors versus the open vector lines we had in the original project. And in reality, you can actually just offset the line around the shape here. You don't have to offset all of these lines in the middle if you didn't want to. That way it would save you a lot of vector trimming inside of all these intersections. Now while we still are looking at this file, I also noticed a few issues. I'm going to preview our holes here. So I'm going to preview that toolpath there. And if we go down to the bottom, let's switch to our Z height here. And we'll zoom in down here. And you can see this line at the bottom in the middle. It looks like it's too high up. So it looks like the offset of this line is a little bit off. So we're going to take a look at fixing this for him. So we're going to go to reset our preview and we're going to switch back to our 2D view and back to our drawing tab. And to fit our project in the screen, we're going to type the letter F on your keyboard and that's going to fit it to your screen. And now let's zoom in down here in our problem area. And it looks like we also have an issue right here. We have a little vector issue there. So we can take a look at all of this. So the first thing we're going to do is select our shape here and type the letter N on your keyboard. That'll switch into our node editing mode. And you can see we have a few extra nodes here. You can see this is a little bit of an angle. So it looks like the arc is slightly off here where it didn't line up. So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to also check our outermost line here. And this one looks much better. It does have an extra node at the top here. We can delete that by right clicking and delete. Or you could type the letter D on your keyboard to delete that as well. So I'm going to delete this. And that's just one extra node that we didn't need. So now you could see this outer shape has a node on each corner here, as well as the start and end point of the arc. And that's what our nodes should look like. You want the least amount of nodes on all of your shapes to produce the best results for your tool pass. So I'm going to use this outer shape here to create the new lines we need in here. So I'm going to type the letter N on my keyboard again to get out of our node editing. And Brian actually has his layers nice and organized here. So we have the layout, which is the outer shape. He has the holes on a separate layer here. And then the lines all in between there on a separate layer as well. So this is going to help us stay organized. We're actually going to create a new layer here. So we're going to name this one New Lines. And let's change the color on this so we make these obvious. So we're going to change it to blue. And that's just going to help us determine which is the new line and what's the old line. And also this layer zero has nothing on it. You could tell by this layer sheet here is empty. And you can see these ones have something on it. And then our new layer has nothing on it as well. So we don't need this layer zero. So we're going to right click on that and delete that just to keep everything organized. And now we have our new line selected as our active layer. And you can tell that by the layer up here. So we're going to select out of that to close it. So now we want to create an offset line on the inside of this outer shape to create our new lines to follow this arc perfectly. So to do that, we first want to measure our distance in between all these lines. So we're going to use our measuring tool. And we want to measure between two points. So we're going to zoom in here. We're going to select a point on this inner line. And then we're going to measure to our outer line here and select anywhere there. And you can see our X distance, which is left to right, is 0.5001. So that's very close to half an inch. So we're going to use half an inch as our reference. And we can measure in between all these lines here to make sure we have the same distance. And this one's 0.497, so that's very close. And let's check this one. And we have 0 0.5057. So it looks like we want to be a half inch in between all these lines. So we're going to close this down. We're going to zoom out. Let's select our outermost line there. And with our new lines as our active layer. So this is going to put any additional lines we create on this layer. We're going to use our offset tool. And we want to go inwards. So we're going to offset on the inside of our shape there. And we want to create sharp offset corners, so we'll keep that selected. And I also want to select new. And what this is going to do is deselect our original shape 
And then when it offsets the next shape, it's going to select that new shape. And I'll show you why that's going to be helpful. So now we have our setup here. We want to set our distance. So we're going to do half an inch. So 0 0.5. And now everything's set up. We're going to click offset. And now you can see that deselected our original line and then selected our new line there. And you can see how much off our arc is on this. So when we move these arc lines here, it's actually going to make our circles in this arc be off centered as well. So we're going to want to create a line to follow for those as well. So to do that, I'm going to set an offset distance here, half of our half inch here, which would be one quarter of an inch. So in here, we can either type in one quarter or we can divide this in half by typing divide by two and then equals. And that gives us 0.25. So we're going to keep our setup the same here and click offset. And now you can see that new line is selected and it's on the center of our holes on the side here. But you can see the holes on the arc here are not on the center of that line. So we're going to adjust that in a minute, but we still have to create our other lines here. So now that we have that all set up, we're going to offset a quarter of an inch again, and then we'll do a quarter inch two more times. So with our option here, select new, that's going to make this very easy. We just have to click offset and that's going to create another line there. And then it automatically selects that line. So we're going to click it another time. And now we have another line here to follow our holes. And then we're going to do it one more time. And that's going to be our inner shape there. So now that we have those all set up, we're going to click close. And if we deselect this, you can see all of these lines we just created are now a color of blue. And that's because we set that up in our layer menu up here to make the lines blue. So that just makes it less confusing when you have all these lines here. So now what we want to do is get rid of our old lines and use our new lines that we just created to replace the shape. So to do that, I'm going to start with our outermost line here. I'm going to select that. And if we zoom out here, you can see that line goes all the way around our shape, even on the inside here. So we're going to want to keep some of this, but we want to get rid of some of it as well. So to do that, I'm going to follow this line until we get to the point where it stops using our new line, which would be right here at the start of this arc. And I'm going to type the letter N on my keyboard to enter our node editing mode. And at this point here where it starts the arc, I'm going to hover over this point and type the letter C on my keyboard and that's going to cut our vector there. So you can see if you move this point, we are now separated there. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. Now we're still cut there. We want to go to the other side of our project. So we're going to follow our old line up to the top here and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to cut it here. So you can either type the letter C or you can right click on this and do cut vector. And now that's separated that old line there on the outside from the old line on the inside. So now we're going to type the letter N on my keyboard to go back to our selection mode. And now we have the old line selected. And you can see if we were to move this over here, you can see this vector is cut at the top here where we used our node editing to cut that. So we no longer need this part here. So I'm going to type in delete on my keyboard to get rid of that. And I'm going to use the same process to get rid of the other lines here. So we're going to zoom in here. The top one here is the blue line. That's our new line. We don't want to get rid of that. So I'm going to select the black line there, which is our old line. And I'm going to follow this up until it gets to the arc there and also up to the top point here. So I'm going to type in the letter N on my keyboard to get into our node editing mode. And I'm going to zoom in here. And it looks like we may have issues with this arc too. We can look at this later. So I'm going to hover over this node here and type the letter C again. That's going to cut that vector. And I'm going to zoom out. And this here is actually an open vector because it ends right here without connecting to anything. So we're good on this end. So now we have this old line selected. I'm just going to type in the delete key on my keyboard. That's going to get rid of that line there. And now we're still in our node editing mode. We can select our inner line here and we'll do the same thing. We're going to follow this up till it gets to this arc here. I'm going to cut it here by typing the letter C on my keyboard. And then we're going to look on the other side here. 
we're going to select our line there and we're going to come up to the top here and we're going to cut it right here on the corner so hover over your point and type the letter C to cut and now we're going to come down here select our old line there that we just cut and now you can see our endpoints stop here where we just cut it and we're going to delete on your keyboard to get rid of that and now we'll zoom in here and now you can see it looks a lot less confusing because we only have the new lines here. So now we want to extend our lines here because you can see they are no longer long enough to reach this point. So to do that, we are still in our node editing mode. We could select this and then select our endpoint here and click and drag until it snaps to that line there. And we still want to make sure our smart snapping is turned on. So we go in a nice straight line there and then we can come down here and we can do the same thing. Drag this until it snaps to the endpoint there. And then we'll go over to these lines over here and if we select these ones these ones are going to be a little bit different because we're on an angle but you can see if you click and drag with our smart snapping on it's going to keep that in a nice straight line so we can see if we can snap to here and it looks like we can so we're going to release there and we're going to do the same thing down here click and drag and snap it to there and we'll do the same thing on this side click drag until it snaps and then click and drag and make sure you're on your smart snapping dotted line there and we're going to come back here to our line where it snaps but you can see sometimes it gets rid of your smart snapping line so to overcome that we can just go slightly past our line here doesn't matter how far and release and then use our trimming tool make sure your checkbox here is turned off so we don't join it to anything and then just click on this overhang here to get rid of it and then close this down and now that's trimmed right to the end there. Now let's zoom out here. So this is looking pretty good so far. We still have to adjust our circles here. So we're gonna work on that now. And there's a few ways we could do this, but the method I'm going to use here, I'm actually going to draw a temporary line here. So I'm gonna use our draw line tool. And with our snap settings turned on, I'm going to hover over our circle here until it snaps into the center point there. And then I'm gonna click there and I'm going to come over to this circle and if you hover over the edge of the circle it wakes up the circle to allow you to snap to the center and we can see our center point there we're going to click there to snap and now I'm going to hit the space bar to end that line and allow us to draw a new line so I'm going to come over to the other side we're going to do the same thing we're going to snap to the center point of this circle come down to this circle and snap to that center point and now that's the last line we had to create so we can actually right click and that's going to end our line there and close down the form. So with this line here we're going to use this to trim our line here for our path of our circles. So all the lines we are creating right now are temporary. We will delete these later. And with this line here we want to extend it till it goes past this line here. So we're going to type the letter N on our keyboard to go into our node editing. And with our smart snapping we can click and drag and leave this in a nice straight line and we want to go past this line doesn't matter how far and this side is already passed so this side's good now let's come over here we'll do the same thing select this line and drag this along our smart snapping there and we'll go past our line and release and this other side is good so now we're going to click the letter n on our keyboard to exit our node editing and now we want to trim the excess of our line here to end these arcs here. So I'm going to use my scissor tool. Once again, making sure the checkbox is turned off. So that way we still have open vectors. And then I'm just going to zoom in here and click this here to get rid of it. That's going to give us a start point there for our circles. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this line. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So just trim these here. And now we're going to close this form here. Now if we zoom out here, now you can see these arcs here are individual arcs no longer connected to the rest of our shape. And the endpoints of these arcs go right at the center of our original circles. So now this is going to give us a nice reference line to follow our circles matching the arc of our shape. So now to set our circles up, we are first going to select our circles here. And you can see these are all grouped together, so we want to ungroup these. So the shortcut to do that is the letter U on your keyboard. That's going to ungroup your objects. And now we can select just one circle here. And with this circle selected, we're going to hold our shift key and select the arc that we want it to follow. 
And now we wanted to go to this tool here. It's called copy along vectors. So we'll select that. And that's gonna open up this form here where we want to set up our spacing and number of copies that we want to create with these circles. So to do this, we want to copy our object and that's going to copy our selected object that we selected first. So that's what we want. And then down here, we have to specify either the distance between copies or the number of copies. In this case, the distance slightly varies depending on these arcs. So I'm actually gonna do number of copies and that's gonna even up our spacing in there. Now for the number of copies, we can just count the number of circles we have here. So we could see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have 10 circles, but you can see it also skips one in the middle here. So actually we're gonna do 11. That's going to keep our spacing where we want it. And then we could delete that extra circle there. So for number of copies, we're gonna enter 11. And then down here, we have the option to align objects to curve. And what that's gonna do is rotate our objects to follow the path of the curve. But in this case, we have perfect circles, so that's not gonna matter. So we can turn that off. Our next option here is create copies on new layer. And we don't need to do that, so we'll turn that off. But what we do wanna do is make the active layer up here, the holes. So that's gonna create all of our copies on this layer that's active. And we don't need to reverse the direction either. So we're gonna click copy. And there you can see it created a copy of all those circles, nice and evenly spaced along that new arc we created. So now we just have to delete our original shapes there. But before we do that, we're gonna do the same thing down here. So we're gonna select our original circle there, hold our shift key, select our new arc, and then our number of copies is going to be the same. So we're gonna keep all of our settings here the same and click copy. And now you can see that turned out really good. So we're gonna close this form down. And now we're just gonna hold our shift key and select all of our original objects that we no longer want, including these center circles here. So we're just gonna hold our shift key and just go around, select each object. And we no longer need these lines here at the end. And we no longer need all of our original circles. And we also no longer want these arcs as well. So we can select those. And then once we have all those original shapes selected, we're gonna click delete on our keyboard. And that got rid of all that extra there. And now you can see this new corner here is looking really good. Everything looks nice and evenly spaced and the arcs look nice and parallel to each other. And now we can go up here and check this arc out as well. And before we work on this arc, we're going to select these lines here that we no longer want. So these two here that were a reference for our circles, we can delete those. And then the remaining lines here, we're actually gonna need some of those because if you remember, we cut our vectors at the beginning there. And we can tell this by going to our layers and turning our visibility off for our new lines. And you can see we have no lines on the middle or the outside of these shapes. So we'll turn that back on. So what we wanna do is get rid of the extra up here. So I'm gonna turn our line layer to be our active layer. So by selecting that, we're gonna now have our lines as active. And we're going to deselect out of here. And now we can zoom in down here to our endpoints here. And I can also tell that this line here is not straight. Just by looking at it, you can tell it's a little bit of an angle. So we could fix that as well. So I'm just going to go to my line tool and select one of these points on the end here and just come across. And on your cursor, you can see it'll say the letter A and then 0.0. .0. That means we have a nice zero angle and that'll make it nice and straight. So we'll select here, going past our line there and we're gonna right click to exit. And now if we zoom in here, you can see our original line there was not straight, so we have a little bit of a gap. So we're gonna delete that by hitting delete on our keyboard. And now this side here, I'm just going to double click on this to bring it into the transform mode. And then I'm going to select this end here and drag it out to make it a little bit longer. And now we're gonna use our scissor tool. And this time we wanna make sure the checkbox is checked and that's gonna close these vectors when we trim them. So we're gonna select this end here, this here, and as well as this corner over here. 
And we can trim this as well. This won't connect to anything though because we have no endpoints to connect to. And we're going to click close. And now you can see that closed that vector there. So we have a nice closed vector. And this one here is going to be still open. And that's what we want. Now we're going to zoom out here. And we're going to do the same thing on this end. Except this end is going to be a little bit different because we go into an arc. So on this side I'm going to use a little bit different technique. And I'm actually going to select our old line here. And I'm going to type the letter N on my keyboard to go into the node editing. And you can see we have an endpoint right here. So we can right click on that and cut the vector there. Now this arc is separate from the line on this side. So I'm going to right click to exit our node editing. And I'm going to go into our line tool again. And I'm going to snap at the end point of that line there. So wherever it snaps here, which is right here, I'm going to click and I'm going to come over to the other side and make sure our angle is at zero. And I'm going to go past our line so we have a nice straight line. And just going to click there to end point there. And then I'm going to right click to exit. And now we can see if we select our arc right here, we have the new line starting at the very end of that arc. And if we go to the other side, you can see if we turn our node editing on, that arc actually is slightly above there. So that means this arc is a little bit off. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is exit our node editing mode. So type the letter N. I'm going to go to our scissor tool. And I want to keep this an open vector, so I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to trim away this extra we have. So click on that. And we're going to close. And now I'm going to select our new line there. I'm going to go into our node editing mode by typing the letter N. And now for this line here, we have a nice straight line, but we're going to make this into an arc. So to do that, we're going to right click and we're going to click this here to arc. So select that. And now you can see that created an arc at the bottom here, but we want it at the top. So we can either mirror this or we can select this point here click and drag until it comes up to the top here and we could snap it here to our original shape and now you could see the arc is slightly different from the original but this will give us a nice reference to go off of so let's exit our node editing by typing the letter n again and our original arc we can select that and we can delete that now we have our new arc in its place so now let's connect this to our line here so we're going to select this line and we want to connect this down here at the start of the arc. So let's try our scissor tool. So let's select that. And we want to close the vectors. So we're going to check this box to turn it on. And we're going to click this here to trim away that. And now you can see if we zoom out, that got rid of that extra line there. And we, now we have a nice arc here. So we're going to close this form down. And now if we select this, it is now connected together on this side. But we're still open on this side. So to fix that, we're going to hold shift, select that line there, and come over here to join selected objects. And you can see right now we have two open vectors. After we click the join button, we're still going to have one open vector and zero closed. And that's because we still have this extra line here. And that's okay, we're going to deal with that in a second. So let's click join. And now we select this line here. And now you can see this is all joined together. So we're going to close this. So let's see what we have here. So it all looks pretty good at the bottom half. The only thing we have to work on is this top corner here. So to fix this top corner, we're going to do a similar method like we did at the bottom by offsetting this outer line here. So I'm going to go into my node editing mode and we're going to get rid of this extra line here. So to do that, we can right click on that line and click delete span. You can also type the letter D on your keyboard. So I'll show you both methods there. We'll click delete span and that gets rid of that line. And then also if you hover over the line and type the letter D on your keyboard, that gets rid of the line there. You can also do the same thing for the endpoints by hovering over the endpoint and type the letter D. That removes that endpoint. But you can see that took away that whole entire line there. And that's not what we wanted to do. So we can do control Z to undo. And instead what we're going to do is select this line and just drag it down here and we're going to go slightly past there and we can connect that later. Now we also have this line up here. So we select this and this looks like it goes all the way around here. So we want this to end somewhere in here as well. 
So we're going to do the same thing and delete the extra here by hovering over the line and typing the letter D. And then this endpoint here, we're going to drag it down somewhere down here, just to keep it out of the way for right now. And then we still have one extra line up here and we no longer need that. So we can just click delete on our keyboard to get rid of that entire line. So now with our new arc here, we're going to offset this inwards just like we did the other one. But in this case, we have the entire thing closed and we would be offsetting the entire thing. So instead, what we're going to do is come down here a little bit further where it's straight and we're going to type in the letter C on your keyboard. That's going to cut the vector wherever you have selected there. And then the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Doesn't matter where, just we're going to type in the letter C to cut that. And now we're going to type in the letter N on our keyboard to go into our node editing. And now we select this, you can see that's cut there where we selected. So now that's going to allow us to just focus on this corner here and not worry about creating extra lines everywhere else. And there's many different ways to do all this. This is just the method I'm showing you here. So let's zoom into this corner here and we're going to use our offset tool again. And you can see we still have our distance set up for a quarter of an inch and we're set for inwards, but you can see this is also the left side. So that means this black point here, it'd be on the left side of that point. Since this is an open vector, it doesn't always mean it'll go to the inside of the line. When you're offsetting an open vector, it'll always go on the left or right side of the black point here. So in this case, we want to go on the right side. So we're going to click right, which is also outwards. And we're going a quarter of an inch and we're selecting new. So we're going to click offset. And there's our new line for our circles to follow. And we're going to do it again, offset. This is our new arc line in the middle. We'll do it again. There's our new line for our circles in the middle to follow. And then we'll do it one more time. That's going to be our new line for the center arc there. And now we have all of our arcs set up. We're going to close this down. And let's select our old arcs here. We'll get rid of these so it's less confusing. So we're going to take a look at where this ends. And this ends all the way down at the bottom. And you can see it's offset from our line that we created the new one. So we're actually going to just delete this entire line. And then we can extend that down to the bottom. So that gets rid of that arc. Let's see our bottom arc here. We'll select this one here. And I'm not sure which one's our new one. But we can tell by where it ends here. So this is our new one because it ends where we cut our vectors. And this other one here comes all the way down to back around to our original shape. And this one is perfectly aligned where we want it. So I'm actually just going to cut this somewhere down here where we cut our original. So I'm just going to come down here and type the letter N to go to our node editing. And then just hover over this line down here and type the letter C to cut our vector. Now type the letter N again to go back into our selection mode. Now this original line is selected. We're going to delete that and we'll connect all this back together in the last step. So let's take a look up here. We're going to adjust our circles again. So we're going to do the same method. We're going to use our line tool to draw a temporary line in between each of these circles. So we're going to snap to centers and hit spacebar. We're going to go to this side, snap to the centers and then right click to exit. And now we want to extend these lines. So I'm going to type in the letter N to go into our node editing. And I'm going to drag this past our line there. Do the same thing on this side. And now I'm going to type in the letter N to get out of our node editing. And now we're going to use our scissor tool. We're going to turn our checkbox off so we don't connect anything. And we're going to trim away the extra here. And now we're going to close this down. Now we no longer need this line. We no longer need this line or these ones here. So I'm holding shift and selecting all these lines we don't need and I'll delete those out of the way. And now we have our new path for our circles to follow. So I'm going to select our circle, hold our shift key and select our arc. And I'm going to use our copy along vectors tool. And we're going to do the same setup here, except this time we have less circles. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to set the number of copies here to five. And we also want to turn our holes to be their active layer. So we're going to turn that on. And then we're going to click copy. And that made our new circles along our line there. We'll do the same thing down here. Select our circle and then hold shift and select our arc. We'll have the same number here. So we'll click copy. And now we'll close this down. 
And now we're going to hold our shift key and select all of our old circles and the arc and we'll delete all this. So we have all that selected. We're going to click delete on our keyboard. Now we'll zoom out. Now you can see this corner here looks nice and even and parallel to each other. So now our last step is to connect everything back together. So to do that, we're going to select this line here and holding our shift key, we're going to select this line here and we're going to close this gap here by using this tool here. It's called join slash close vectors with a straight line. So click on that and you can see that automatically closes that with a nice straight line. And now this portion here is overlapping. So we're going to take our old line here and type the letter N on our keyboard to go into our node editing and we're going to drag this down here and we could snap that right to the point there. And now we're going to click N again to exit. So now holding our shift key, we're going to select these two lines here. So now we have everything selected for their outer shape. We're going to use our join tool. So we're going to click on that. And now you can see we have three open vectors. After we click the join tool, we're going to have one close vector and that's what we want. So let's click join and click close. And now we select this here and now everything's joined together. And I always like to go into my node editing mode again. And if there's any extra nodes like these here, I'm just going to hover over these and type the letter D to get rid of all these. That just gets rid of any unnecessary nodes. The only nodes we want are in the corners and at the start and ends of our arcs. And we check down here. Everything looks pretty good. Now our last step is to extend this line here. So we're going to type the letter N to exit our node editing. And for this line here, we can actually extend this using our extend tool. So I'm going to use this tool here. It's called extend. And you could click on this line here and then come down here and click on this line. And that's going to automatically extend that line all the way to the end. So now we're going to click close and we're going to select this line and make sure it joined back together. And it looks like it did. We'll check our nodes on this line. And you can see this line ends right here. So we have to still connect this back together. So I'm actually going to select our other line here and drag this node point down until it snaps to the end. Now you can see these are both at the same end point. So I'm going to type in the letter N again to exit our node editing. Hold our shift key, select both of these lines. And then also the shortcut to go to your join tool is the letter J on your keyboard. And now you can see we have two open vectors and after we click join, we're going to have one open vector and that's what we want. So let's click join. And now let's click close and I'm going to select this line and go to our node editing again and just get rid of this extra node there. So delete that. And now that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click the letter N again to get out of our node editing. The last thing I'm going to do is revert this one back to our original shape we had. So it's just going to be the original line inside there. So I'm going to offset one of these lines here using our offset tool and I'm going to go inwards. And I'm going to do a 32nd of an inch because that's what we offsetted it before. And then I'm going to delete these two lines here. And we actually had that on the wrong layer. So I'm going to right click on this and move to layer and move that to the line layer. Now I'm going to close this down. And now we are completely done with all of our editing. So now we're going to switch over to our toolpath tab. And since we created new holes, we're going to double click on our drilling toolpath to edit this. And instead of selecting all of these individual holes, we can go to the vector selector down here. So click selector and we could do close vectors and we want to select what layer it's on. So we're going to select the layers only and we're going to select the holes layer and you can see that automatically selects everything here. We can also associate with the toolpath down here. So we're going to click close. And now you can see the vector selection is turned to automatic and we have all of our holes selected here. So we're going to click calculate. And now we can preview that selected toolpath. So there's all of our holes. And now we're going to go back to our 2D view. And this vCarve toolpath we no longer need. So I'm going to right click on this and delete and delete this. And then our profile toolpath, we're going to want to keep this. So we're going to double click on this. And this we can use the same method, but we first have to show advanced toolpath options. So I'm going to check that. 
And now down at the bottom here, we have the vector selection. We'll go to selector. We want closed vectors and we want selected layers only. And we want to be on the lines layer. But you could see over here, that's not selecting everything. So that means our inner lines must be on a different layer. So we're going to close this and let's close this toolpath and let's check to see what layer we're on here. So our new lines, we have nothing on this layer. So we're going to right click and delete that. And let's see if we hide our line layer. Okay, we do have everything on that line layer. The issue we have there, if we go back to our profile toolpath and go to show advanced toolpath options and selector, I forgot we had closed vectors selected. So in this case, this method is not going to work because we have open and closed vectors. So what I'm going to do instead is close this and up here in your layers, you can actually right click on the layer you want to select and click select layer vectors. And that's going to select all of our vectors on that layer. And now we're going to click calculate. And now we can preview that selected toolpath. And there we go. Now we have all of our lines created. And now we can go back to our 2D view, select the outer shape there, and we can create a profile toolpath around that using our profile toolpath. And we want to be on the outside and we can select any tool we want here. Let's try a quarter inch end mill. And then you want to confirm all of your settings here. I'm just going to use what I have here and click select. And we want to make sure we're on the outside of our line and we want to go all the way through our material. So I'm going to do Z equals and that's going to automatically enter our material thickness that we have in our job setup. And just for this example, I'm not going to set up anything else. I'm going to click calculate and we're going to click preview selected toolpath. And there we go. That does the cutout and I'm going to double click on this extra to remove it. And there's our finished piece all fixed up. And if we zoom in here, you can see our arcs are nice and parallel to each other. And we have nice crisp lines on all of our lines there. And this arc down here is nice and parallel as well. And it's also parallel to our outer edge. So I hope this answers Brian's question. And I hope everyone else learned something from this video as well. If you guys would like to learn more, make sure you check out my Vetric Master Training course. And in this course, I set up a nice, very organized way to learn all things Vetric software. So everything's broke up into nice organized chapters with bite-sized pieces. And you can learn all things about Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire. And once you sign up, you have unlimited access to watch these videos as many times as you like. I also do live training every week. So if you'd like to watch me do live projects and ask any questions you like along the way, you can sign up for my weekly live training. And if you can't make it to the live events, I also have replays available every week and you can watch those as many times as you like. And make sure you join my free CNC file help and support group for any help you like with your projects.